Hello, so so what uh, Well, um, good evening, everyone in Asia. Um, welcome um, to our uh, high school virtual high school fair for uh, soccer players. And uh, let me introduce myself. My name is George. I'm a CEO and the founder of the agency College Recruits. We are number one sport consulting uh, firm uh, in Asia that we are helping families and the kids um, coming here to pursue their dream, both educational and also um, in sports. And uh, we are helping, um, you know, operating more than eight years, we're helping more than 300 um, students or families uh, around the world coming here to US, um, basically from uh, high school, uh, college and professional. And uh, we are very excited to be able to host our first virtual high school uh, fair. And uh, our special guest today is um, Coach Sam um, Del Melo. Um, he's a, a, a director of football um, and also um, head coach for a boys soccer program at Pusak in uh, school. Um, welcome to the program, Sam. Thank you very much, George. I appreciate you guys having me today. Um, I'm excited to speak about Huzak School and specifically our, our soccer programs that we offer. Um, as George mentioned, I, I am the director of the soccer program at Huzak School. Um, in addition to that, I'm the head coach of the boys varsity team um, and also an associate admissions director. So um, excited to talk about it, excited to get into it. Um, Shall we go ahead, George, or would you like to give anything else before I get oh, going? Oh, yes, yes, please. Um, well, thank you. Um, just want to, uh, as, as a housekeeping, everyone who on a Zoom call, please stay mute um, throughout um, the, 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 the session. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and type us a, a question. Uh, at, the, at the bottom of the screen, you will see the message, a chat room. Uh, just go ahead and, and send us a message. And welcome everyone um, who join us on the live Facebook we are live on 35 Facebook uh, pages uh, in Asia. Um, go ahead, Sam. Well, thank you. And we all were excited to have you here today. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, George. Um, so before I get into the presentation that I've put together that uh, gives a little background on who's at school as well as our, our soccer program, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to sort of um, speak about the current worldwide situation we're in and how Huzak has been operating this year. Um, so throughout the world, everyone, it seems, is, is dealing with this current global pandemic, um, which is forcing us into, um, you know, certain situations that are uh, quite unheard of. To date, Huzak School has been open um, since August uh, 15th, when some of our players first arrived. Classes started on September 14th. We've had classes in person since then. Um, our soccer players specifically have um, begun with their training on uh, the 15th of August. So we've been active with in-person classes um, for now over two months, going into three months. Um, and we're very excited about that. Um, our students have been in the classroom. They've been active within their advising groups. Um, they've been in back active on on-campus um, events, and they've been active within their soccer program. So, you know, we have to date been able to play eight matches uh, against both club and prep school teams um, with the bulk of the schools in New England and the country um, they are currently unable to play. So we are very excited about what we've been able to do this year, um, the ground that we're laying for um, the Huzak soccer program. I am currently in my first year at Huzak school. Um, I took over the job in August. Um, I'm very excited about this program. Currently we have a soccer program full of international players. Um, they are coming from countries like Brazil. They are coming from countries like Spain, Italy, Bermuda, the Dominican Republic, South Africa, Ghana, um, and, and a few more. So we are excited about the group that we have um, assembled here, and, and we're very excited to see what they can do um, heading forward into the future. So 
Um, I just want to now share my screen with you guys and we're going to go through um, a PowerPoint presentation that I put together. It gives a little background on uh, the school. In addition, uh, more specifically, some background into our, our soccer program. Okay, so this is Huzak School. Let me see if I can minimize that. Perfect. This is um, what we call Tibbetts Mansion. Um, currently, this is the home of our admissions office uh, on the bottom floors. Um, it is currently where I am located and where I'm living on campus with a number of our boys soccer players in addition to our um, boys hockey players in this dorm. So uh, as I mentioned, it is, it is our admissions building. It is the oldest building on campus. Um, it was built in the late um, 1800s uh, when the school was founded. Um, and, and is really a, a unique piece of, of Huzak school history. Let's see if I can switch the page. Okay, so as I mentioned, Huzak school was founded in 1889. Um, it's located in New York State. We are uh, northeast of Albany. So about 40 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes from Albany, uh, which is the capital of New York State. There is an international airport there, which is very convenient for our students who are traveling um, from abroad to campus. We are situated on about 350 acres of land. So it's quite a large campus. Um, on our campus, we have 10 buildings. Um, most recently, we just completed um, over the course of the summer, our girls dorm, which is a brand new dorm, it is an excellent facility. We were able to um, follow through on, on the construction um, thanks to donations from a number of alumni who were generous and, and have really done a great job of providing back to the school community. Uh, one of the things that we like to pride ourselves on at Kuzak School is the small student to teacher ratio. Um, currently on campus, we have around 200 students, that is normal um, for Huzak School. That allows our students to have a lot of face-to-face -face interaction with their teachers, which we find as an essential um, piece to help students develop both academically and socially, um, that they consistently have opportunities to interact face-to-face -face in a small setting with their teachers so that they can continue to improve, continue to develop, and eventually um, move on to college. We also offer a number of AP courses, um, which are very essential for high level students who are seeking to attend high level um, universities. So talking about your, your Ivy League universities, um, your NESCAC universities. One of the beauties of the location um, that we're in is that we have uh, extreme close proximity to a number of these schools, a number of the NESCAC schools, a number of the Ivy League schools. So that is very exciting. Um, on top of that, we have elite sports programs. I today will talk about soccer, um, but we also have high level programs in boys basketball, high level programs in boys and girls tennis, high level programs in boys and girls hockey. So excited um, for, for the future here at Huzak School, specifically on the sports side. Okay, as I mentioned, um, school was founded in 1889. Um, so for over 130 years, uh, Huzak has stayed true to the values of founder uh, Edward Dudley Tibbetts. Um, really crucial to the Huzak community is the sense of one-on-one -on -one interaction. So whether that's one-on-one -on -one interaction, student to student, student to teacher, student to advisor, student to coach. That is an essential piece of the life here at Huzak School. We do the best that we can to provide our students with a successful learning environment where they can develop and they can also continue to create social bonds which will last for years. That is one of the things that we pride ourselves on is that after our alums graduate, they're very excited to come back to campus. They're very excited to learn about what the school is doing. They're very excited to learn about what the sports programs are doing. It is a very, very important thing that we pride um, ourselves on. 
So as I mentioned, uh, we're located in New York State. We're about a half an hour from the capital, Albany. We're about two and a half hours from New York City, about two and a half hours from Boston. This means that um, there are opportunities for students to travel um, on certain weekends for excursions to these types of cities to enjoy um, a little bit of their social lives. As I mentioned, in a normal year, about 200 students, seven to one student ratio, uh, student to teacher ratio, and 100% of our senior class are going on to college. Now, Kuzak starts in eighth grade, and it goes all the way through postgraduate years. As for our campus, as I mentioned this summer, we just finished our 10th dorm. It is called Town Hall. It is a girls dormitory. It is absolutely gorgeous. We're so excited to have it. In addition, we have a fitness center with our, our basketball court. Um, in addition, our weight room. We have multiple Mac labs on campus, which allows students to really utilize both graphic design and art programs in addition to ESL language programs and whatever other needs they may have uh, on their own. One of the big things that we see, it's really important for our soccer players to be able to create highlight videos. So having multiple Mac labs on campus really makes it easy for those students to take any game film that we have recorded and start to break it down into highlight videos to send to college coaches. In addition, we have a natural grass uh, match training field, uh, excuse me, match field, in addition to a natural grass training area. So it's, it's an exciting complex that we're working on um, here and we're working into next year on completely renovating the area and putting in a brand new grass field. So we're very excited about that opportunity. Uh, in addition, we also have an indoor swimming pool, uh, tennis courts are on campus and six miles of cross country trails. Here is Town Hall. This is the brand new dormitory, which we just built. This is a, a girls dormitory. Um, we're very thankful for the support we've had from our alums. This is the, an example of another dorm. Uh, Pitt Mason is a boys dormitory uh, situated uh, up the hill on Hoosac campus. It's a bit of a walk, but it's, it's a gorgeous dormitory as well. Here is Cannon House, uh, overlooks uh, our, our pond on campus, right on the entrance uh, to the school. What is really important um, for our soccer players specifically, and, and certainly our international students, is that uh, we provide ESL or ELL classes. Uh, a number of our students coming from Spain or Italy, um, or, or Brazil or, or any country abroad, they find the need for extra help in English. And Huzak School does a great job of providing that so that our students are prepared so that they are ready to improve on their TOEFL scores, so that they are ready to eventually take the SATs um, and, and be prepared for, for college. With our ESL classes, they are leveled so that there are in, in, uh, introductory courses, there are intermediary courses, and there are advanced courses. So on arrival uh, to school, should a student require ESL, that student will be tested. They will be appropriately, uh, appropriately placed into the correct level, and then they will have the opportunity to learn in a small class environment and improve uh, on their English. Now to speak a little bit about uh, our boys soccer program. So this is our current team this year. Uh, here's a, a match shot before we played a game against a club in the Albany region. Uh, I, I will get into um, the clubs that we play in a minute. Um, that is the link to our athletics website as well. Our Instagram is, is below. It's Kuzak underscore soccer program. Um, certainly feel free to check us out. Um, see see what, you, what you think about what we're doing. And, and certainly we have, um, I think, some, some very exciting photos on there that, that will be quite, quite interesting. So I, I was speaking to George prior to starting. 
And one of the things that I mentioned to him is that we provide a little bit of a different model when it comes to the traditional boarding school soccer experience. Traditionally in the United States, soccer is played over one season. So that means soccer is traditionally a fall sport. Students who play with their high schools in the fall will have roughly a three month season. Those students then have the opportunity to go and play with club teams through the winter and the spring seasons. At Huzak School, we are offering a full year model. So for our top level team, we offer a fall, winter, spring training and match schedule. So over the course of a normal fall, we will play NEPSAC member schools, some of the top ranked prep school teams in the country, Berkshire School, South Kent, Northwood School, to name a few, Northfield, Mount Hermon, Williston. These are top level prep schools. In addition to that, we also play clubs who represent the MLS Next Academy. The MLS Next Academy is a newly founded league that is comprised of both MLS youth teams in addition to professional level youth clubs. So the Boston Bolts, Black Watch Albany is one, Oakwood Soccer Club. These are three of the teams that we've been able to play this fall and we expect to play many more into the spring. What is really important for our group of players is that they have the opportunity to come to the US to acclimate to the academic, the social and the athletic life. But ultimately, our students want to go on to college. So what we do at Huzak School is we seek to provide the best possible training and match environment for our players. Ultimately, we know that our players need exposure to colleges in order to be recruited. What we provide are matches against top level teams where college coaches are comfortable in assessing our players in that environment. They know the level of the clubs or the high schools that we are playing. They see the level of our program. That way they are able to better assess our players. Throughout the course of a normal year, we would plan to attend four uh, college showcase events. There would be two prep college showcase events in the fall and two club college showcase events in the spring. Now, what is a college showcase event? If you do not know, if you've never heard about it before, it is often a tournament which is put together by an organizer or a club where multiple teams come to one location and play one or two matches over the course of one to two days. When these events are assembled, there will be a number of college coaches who will attend. And when I say a number, it could range anywhere from 20, 25, all the way up to 200, depending on the amount of teams that are attending an event like that. What we have done is we've created relationships with a number of the top level organizers um, for these types of events in the Northeast. So Mainline Jamboree is one that takes place in Pennsylvania. That is a huge level event that this year was put on hold due to COVID, but we were scheduled to attend. They plan to have the event in the spring. We are already planning to attend. In addition, a number of the club teams, as I mentioned, will also put on events like this. And these are really essential for our guys to be able to go out and to play, okay? So to talk a little bit about where our players are coming from, as I mentioned, we have players from Spain, we have players from Brazil, Italy, Bermuda. We have players from Bermuda who have represented their national team at the 17 age group. We have players coming from Spain who have played for Cadiz uh, Club de Football, which is a, a professional club in Spain. We have a player right now from Italy who played for SS Lazio of Rome for seven years. That is a, a traditionally uh, high level club, everyone should know it, who, who, who is involved in, in football and, and loves the game. Um, and we have a player from Kelme uh, Club de Football, which is a top level youth club uh, in Spain. So when we look at our, our college matriculation for our students and specifically for, for our soccer players, 
Um, the types of schools that our students are going to are, are schools like Boston College, NYU, Boston University, Cornell, Berkeley, Penn State, and Connecticut College. So far this year, we already have one player who is committed to go to Connecticut College. That is a NESCAC school. He's a boy from Spain. He's very excited about the opportunity and we're excited to see what he's going to do there uh, next fall. So that is, that is my uh, presentation for you guys. Um, and certainly I'll, I'll open it up now to, to George or to anyone else if there are any, any questions about our, our program. Well, thank you, Sam, uh, for a, a very wonderful uh, presentation. Now uh, we learned a lot more about uh, your program, and uh, congratulations uh, and, and welcome you to uh, to Huzak family. Um, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. So um, one of the thing that you in your presentation, uh, somebody asks about your different season, I guess. Um, yep. So you have fall, you have spring, and you have um, and, and and summer. Um, you start out with uh, fall, which is, you know, yep. you know, it's next and also plan, right? So what do they do in spring and in summer? Yeah, so let, let me break it down more specifically. So over the course of the fall, and we have to understand this is kind of a crazy year with COVID, and we um, have been able to play more games than the bulk of prep schools and boarding schools who I've spoken to in the Northeast. Um, there are not many other schools playing. There are some other clubs playing. Um, but in a traditional year, our fall season, the match schedule would, would be primarily against uh, other boarding schools. Okay. Now there would be games against prep school, uh, excuse me, club teams mixed in there. But primarily during the fall season, we will play at uh, boarding schools. As we transition out of the fall season and the winter starts to come in, because we do get snow in the Northeast, what we do is we look to transition uh, into strength and conditioning three days a week and training at an indoor facility three days a week. In addition, we also provide uh, opportunities to play futsal in our, in our gym on our hardwood uh, basketball court. So over the course of the winter months, you're, you, we're talking about uh, when the students come back um, from winter break, which is usually uh, just after the new year, until about uh, middle of February, we will be involved in indoor training. As we get towards the end of February, that is where we will look to transition back outside to training um, at an outdoor facility and look to start to schedule games against club teams as well as attend club showcases. Traditionally, February is a period in the US where club showcases um, take place. College coaches are not coaching because they're busy coaching in the fall. So they have the opportunity to come out and recruit high school players. So the spring season, is entirely made up of friendly matches against club teams and club showcases. Now, when we specifically talk about training, both the fall and the spring, we're training roughly five days a week with one match per week. Over the course of an entire year, you're talking in the range of 30, 32, 35 matches. Okay, wow, that's a, so it's all the matches and the competition. It is. And then you know, and then also yeah. looking for a more opportunity for you to showcase to uh, to scout and to uh, coaches and stuff. Well, well, that's exactly it for us. So we we have um, we have a number of boys who are quite high level players. We have one boy who represents the Rising Stars of Africa uh, program. When he was 14 years old, he trained with Liverpool, and unfortunately, he couldn't sign with Liverpool. Um, he had issues with his paperwork. But nonetheless, he was a player who was on their radar and someone who they were interested in, in signing. Um, as I mentioned, we also have another player who spent seven years playing for Lazio of Rome. So that's a, traditionally a, a Champions League club in Italy, uh, a well-known professional club. Um, these are boys who would like to play high-level college soccer. They would like to receive uh, their degree in the U.S. That's the first thing that we push forward with them. It's extremely important to follow through on your academics so that you can continue to play soccer at the next level, but you also get a, a, a quality degree out of it. At the end of that process, 
those boys may have the opportunity to go and play at the professional level. So it's certainly something uh, that we try to prepare our boys from, whether it's sport, whether it's just to go on to college, to get a good degree, to have a great experience playing soccer, or whether it's ultimately for, for a few of those special kids to get to the ultimate level to become professional players at the end of it. Good. So that's certainly why we're here too. <laughs> we, we see it important because a lot of time um, kids, you know, when they're young, they quit school and 10 years old, 12 years old. Uh, that's what right. happened a lot in Asia. Uh, but thank you. Um, right. So, all right. As for your timeline, don't, don't want to give anybody a, a fall hole, the family, they understand when you mention about the college showcase, okay? Yep. Uh, in March or April, is that for the recruiting class of August or the following year? So this, again, is kind of in flux this year because of COVID. There's so much going on in the college world. Um, you know, I've talked to a number of Division One assistants, you know, talking about guys at the University of Rhode Island, uh, guys at Georgetown, um, guys at Boston College, um, coaches at American University in DC, um, the list goes on and on. A number of them are still waiting to make decisions on players this year uh, because they haven't had a fall season. The NCAA um, is not playing currently for boys soccer. So in that sense, this year, there are going to be seniors who may return into next year. So we expect this year that college coaches will still be looking at players come the spring for fall of 2021. In a normal year, college coaches will attend a showcase in February, March, April, May, with hopes of signing a player, not for the immediate fall, but for the following fall. Yes. Nonetheless, nonetheless, there are still schools always looking for players late in the game. So there will still be schools who are interested in finding a player in March for that immediate fall. So it really depends school by school. But our job is to try to get our guys the most exposure that we can, attend as many showcases as we can, uh, and put them in that position where they can be identified. Yes. And they're always in school, but not the specific school that you, you have in them there, like Boston College, you know, all this Correct. big name. Correct. So they, they, they're looking forward to recruit kids a following year. So this is Correct. very important. Uh, that's, you know, uh, we tell family all the time, if you have a chance, come here for high school. So yes. you have more possibility to be scouted to the school that you want to go. Because everybody always Absolutely. has a dream school, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if I, if I just add on to that, that's exactly it. Is it's very hard for college coaches to make assessments on players, see over so an international player, and you're sending film to college coaches, it may be very difficult for them to catch level of play, who they're on the film whole picture of the field to a boarding school that is located in the northeast such as Huzak school you have the opportunity to play multiple times in in, in these coaches so you're talking about when we attend those showcases uh, specifically the mainline jamboree in pennsylvania uh, last year with the with another school that i was with we went to uh, manhattan sc which is a club puts on uh, a, a college showcase in february just outside of manhattan the coaches that you're talking about um, who attend these, these showcases, you're talking about North Carolina, you're talking about Wake Forest, you're talking about Georgetown, you're talking about Harvard, you're talking about Boston College, you're talking about um, you know, a number of high level schools who are all located in the Northeast. So being in that close proximity to all of these high level colleges and universities really allows us uh, to get our players that, that exposure that they need and that they desire. Yes, sir. Okay, so, um, you yeah, know, we come to the end. Uh, this is going to be uh, um, the last minute. Uh, thanks again, Coach Sam, and uh, for your time and uh, wonderful information. And we all were really excited to uh, 
to recommend uh, Husak to our clients. And they, 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 will have, they will have a great place to be um, and the place that they can uh, fulfill their dream. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me, George. I really appreciate it. And I look forward uh, to connecting with some of your families. And, and I, am, um, I, I will make sure I forward my information to you, George. So if any families would like to reach out, I'm more than happy to have individual conversations uh, furthermore about, about who's at school and our soccer program. Yes. Thank you, sir. Have a, have a wonderful day. Thank you for your, for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.